Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a quick clip of a uh, Star Wars graphic novel that is selling very well for me. I bought them a few months ago and they've been slowly selling. Um, some of them sold real quickly, some of them are taking a little bit while to sell, but I mean, I paid very little for them. Either way, this is my haul video from yesterday. Yesterday was uh, Wednesday. And we went to the Goodwill today, and it wasn't very kind of depressing. Um, not very much out there. Hopefully, I've been trying to get out to the flea market one of these mornings. But I've had so much going on, I just haven't been able to get out there in the morning. Um, I'm going to try to hopefully go out tomorrow morning and have a tree guy coming again tomorrow morning. So, we'll see how this goes. Either way, uh, here's my haul from the other day. Uh, first off, these Bose headphones were not um, a part of my haul. But, these are the ones I'm going to sell in place of my... Um, which ones did I keep? I'm keeping the... The other headphones from last video or the previous video. Either way, so I was going to keep some headphones. These are the ones that I'm going to sell in place of those headphones. My Bose ones, which I... And, I mean, they sound good. Yeah, they're Bose. I mean, they sound great. Uh, the only problem is, you know, this... When it just sits in your ear like that, it kind of puts a little bit of strain on my ear. So, that's why I'm going to finally sell them. I've kind of just stopped using these. I've been using... Um, the Amazon earbuds, uh, the Alexa ones, but even those still, uh, but Plantronics, that's the ones I, I bought. These Plantronic ones, they feel great. I really like them. So these are the ones I'm going to sell in place of the Plantronics. So this was not picked up at Goodwill. This I already had, but let's see, we got on the table here, some great items. They should, most of them should be fast sellers. I'm hoping. And first things first, we got this Titleist. Now, typically, hats, Titleist hats, aren't really that great. And hats at Goodwill around here cost about $4. Look that. And Titleist hats, you know, they go for like $10 to $15. But this one here is a nice sun hat. Canvas material. This will be perfect. Summer is not here just yet, almost, but it's still pretty hot out there. So for four bucks, I think this can go for 25 to 30. I couldn't find exact comps on it, but it's a really nice Titleist hat. Kind of like a like a safari style of hat in canvas. So I'm thinking 25 to 30 bucks on that. And I'm hoping this is gonna go quick right now. I'm gonna be listing this soon. And I will I will have tomorrow morning. I'm probably I'm gonna film what I have um sold because I sold some of the silverware from my silverware video just a little while ago already that is going out tomorrow so uh, look out for that but Titleist hat probably 25 30 bucks on that hat I couldn't find any comps on it so if it comps out a bit higher I'll definitely I'll price accordingly uh, next item uh, that's a big item well, in a little bit this is a small item nothing crazy here uh, $6.79. This is a crock pot by crock pot. Gravy mate, as you can see. Boom. The cords inside here to keep this warm. So just a gravy boat. You know, 15 to 20 bucks on that. Now that should. I'm, I'm guessing this is probably going to sit for a while. Probably until Thanksgiving or so. Maybe it'll go before 4th of July. We'll see. I don't think that many people are eating gravy though on 4th of July. Although I like gravy <laughs> all the time. But um, not not a crazy buy, but, you know, should double up or more on that. After fees, that is. Next thing here is a big item. I was looking. We have a Goodwill boutique in our area, so higher-end Goodwill products will go there. Usually it's a lot of clothing, brand-new clothing, designer clothing, um, they will have high-end shoes, your Jordans will be found there, your, um, purses, like your Kate Spade, your coach, your higher-end stuff will be there. 
but I pulled a couple items out of there. I go up there once in a while. I say up there because it's upstairs. Um, it's a part of another Goodwill, regular Goodwill. Then you go upstairs to the boutique area. I will go up there to take a look. I'll look at purses. Um, I pretty much go up to look at purses and maybe shoes. Like I don't really... The shoes are priced rather high up there. So it took a special pair of shoes for me to buy it, which I have here right now. But first... I was looking at the jewelry and I saw this bracelet there. And this is a Leatherman. Leatherman products, um, they make for, those of you that are unaware, Leatherman makes multi-tools. If you find them out there at reasonable prices, definitely pick it up. Leathermans can go, you know, on the low end, probably 25, 30 bucks. On the high end, especially if they're brand new, they'll go over $100. So this is a Leatherman, it's called the Leatherman Tread. As you can see, it's a bracelet, multi-tool with all kinds of tools on it. This was personalized and it comes off, just, it just just pulls apart. There's no um, mechanism other than just kind of pulling apart there. It has a little like a ball right there. But you just pull that apart, little multi-tool. Has a bunch of links. Um, these links are removable with a little, uh, they recommend, um, like a nickel or a quarter to unscrew those. And it's labeled on the back. I'm not sure if it's gonna come out or not. But label kind of links they are, you know, link one, two. If you go on their website, this is no longer sold anymore. And I couldn't I was trying to see if anybody else sells it for at retail and nobody does. So this should probably go for about $150 on eBay. And I got it for $14.99. So $14.99 into about 150 maybe 125 dollars on this i was testing it on my wrist because i may keep it but i i feel like i have a rather i mean i don't feel like i have a i don't feel like my wrist looks rather large but apparently when i'm wearing you know bracelets or watches i have to get on the bigger side i don't know but this definitely won't go over my thumb i will need another link for that well, actually, I could probably fit it over, but I'd rather not get it stuck. Because if I need it, like if I, let's say I keep it and I need this, I don't know if I'd be able to get it back over my thumb rather easily. Either way, Leatherman, 125 150 bucks probably for that guy. It is no longer made. If you look on Amazon, I think the there's a listing for $450, so... So that's a nice pickup for 15 bucks, And as you can see at the boutique, I mean, $15 for uh, what they were considering a bracelet. So, I mean, that's, that's crazy. Like at a regular Goodwill, I would not expect to pay $15 for a bracelet. Okay, then the other item I got from the boutique were these shoes right here. I know I was already ranting about I'm not buying shoes. I'm done buying shoes. But when I saw these up there, there were Jordans. I mean, they have, you know, all kinds of shoes up there um, that are usually clean, too. So no work I have to put into it. But I saw these there. <clears throat> I recognize the brand. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but Kizik. Kizik, Kazik. I saw these there, and I've sold these before, and I found these at Goodwill before, this brand. And it sold very quickly. Um, sold about a, took me about a week to sell this brand. And the, the other ones I have were just normal uh, shoes, just like this material with just a regular, you know, sole. Um, and those sold rather quickly. And actually, I did a local pickup uh, on eBay for those ones. So, but these ones here, a little more higher end. They got the easy uh, slip-on design here. Nike also does this kind of design. I do have a pair of these shoes where you easily slip your foot in. And brand new, they go for $150. And I've seen them go new on eBay for $125. So I'm probably going to price these. I was looking at the other sellers that were selling these, and I don't know. You know, $22.29 is what I paid for them. The other sellers aren't quite... They don't have that much feedback on their, you know, they don't have that big of a rating on there, even the, the one that's selling them new. I might price these at $125 and just see what offers I get. 
these are in almost new condition. I mean, there's some some dirt on the, like they were probably worn once or twice maybe. But look out for this brand, K I Z I K. I paid up for these twenty. See, look at that. That's twenty two twenty nine for these types of shoes. That's what I would pay at Goodwill uh, for higher end shoes like your Jordans, your this brand here. I, I <laughs> the other pair I got, I got them for I think like six bucks or so, six or eight dollars. They were under ten bucks, and I'm assuming that Goodwill has now discovered that this brand actually does go for quite a bit. But um. Yeah, our shoes in this area, like high-end shoes and Goodwill, they they price them up. So, but twenty-two dollars, hopefully into about a hundred bucks or more. I was more than happy to pay twenty-two dollars for those. And a nice pair of shoes. Kind of wish they were my size. Uh, men's ten, women's eleven and a half. Very nice shoes. So that was a good pickup, and that should go pretty quickly. Uh, next pickup here is this one was ten dollars, and I saw a sold comp. I'm sorry, not ten dollars, five twenty nine, and I saw a sold comp of sixty five dollars on this. But this one here, the one I saw only had one doll. This one has two dolls. This is Madeline. If you are familiar with that, it's from Nordstrom. But Madeline is a children's character. I forget when it starts, but I remember when I was a kid back in the 80s. And I think it was on PBS. But this one comes with two dolls. And I've seen just the doll sell for about $25. And it has accessories in there. Boom, accessories in there. And it has like a little, boom, little closet armor there. And this has a few more accessories in there as well, too. There's also some hangers, hangers in there. But I saw a sold comp for $65 on this, and, you know, just the dolls alone appear to go for about 20 bucks. And that was a $5 pickup. So, Madeline, House, what did I say about? Authorized Representative, Eden International, Hill House, yeah. Eden Toys, 1999. Yeah, so yeah, if for those of you that know Madeline or are familiar with Madeline, there it is. An old, uh, I forget what Madeline was. I think it was an orphan or something. I don't quite remember, but I, I do remember watching the cartoon. But keep your eye out for that. That is a good buy. Well, hopefully it's a good buy. It should be a good buy because I saw the, the dolls for at least 20 bucks. So at least the dolls will make money back. And maybe the complete thing 65 for one doll, maybe, I don't know, 80 or 100 for two with some accessories. We'll see on that. I'll update you on a uh, what sold video. Uh, next pickup are uh, Fitbits. Keep your eye out for Fitbits. You know, compared to iWatches and everything else, this is kind of, you know, in my opinion, low tech. But people still like Fitbits. You know, it's completely sealed up too. Completely sealed. Now, in our area, the the Goodwills will mark um, brand new products from Target with a gray tag. Gray tag. I think I'm holding it too low. Am I holding it too low? There we go. With a gray tag. And I think this got mistagged. And this probably should have been in the glass case. But this was in the Target section. It was underneath something else, which I lifted it up and I saw this there. Marked with a yellow tag. Eleven forty nine, so it's on the high end for what I pay for things at Goodwill. But should be about fifty or sixty bucks. Keep your eye out for Fitbits. Um you know, sometimes I find them used like in the jewelry section, like the watches, but when they're used, they are heavily used. You know, I haven't really purchase any used Fitbits because when I do see them they are going to take forever to clean. They're just gross. So I have sold a few brand new Fitbits. So if you do find Fitbits, definitely look into those. Look them up. Um, this is just like a like a like a, um, what do you call it? A pedometer? Is it a pedometer? Is that the word? Yeah, see it's just a simple little clip. Clip on. So still goes for 50, 60 bucks. So Still a good pickup. Uh, next item, which I had 
I've purchased big ol', a big old lot of this one time, and these are accessories for Simple Safe, the home security system. And I remember one time I picked up a big old bag full of different sensors, window sensors, motion sensors, and I picked it up rather cheap. Um, this one here too, four dollars nineteen cents. This is brand new, and you can tell it's brand new. Not necessarily by the box, so the box doesn't have any tape or anything. But if you pop the product out, you can see none of the stickers are peeled. There they are still there. And this uh, battery tab hasn't been removed yet. So that is still good. It goes for about 20 bucks. So $4, $4.19 and the 20 bucks. Um, another item here. I have some more items. I'm going to bring them out as soon as I'm done with this, what do you call it, segment really quick. But um, here's another good item, which goes for $25, about right around $25, $30. Just a little desk brass calendar. It is old. Very old. I don't know. It looks like 40s, maybe 50s or so. Just a little... I, I guess you would call these perpetual calendars because... You can continuously move, you know, the uh, the date and the day of the week and the month. But, yeah, there's a little, just a little desk calendar. It's kind of cool. Cells. I had to scan this with Google Image just to, um, uh, just to, this one, yeah, there we go. I had to Google image it to figure out exact, to find the listing. So, found the listing, and I was like, oh, perfect. I'll pick that up. Another interesting thing, it's kind of, I don't know if it's kind of related to this or not, but it's um, uh, speed chess clocks. If you find these speed chess clocks, definitely, I mean, for the right price, they'll go $20, $25, and they sell surprisingly fast. <laughs> speed, speed chess, selling fast. Here's another item. Another item I have, you know, I'm pr I have success. And I'm pretty sure other people do too and will have too if you pick these up. But rosaries, you know, this is a plastic glow in the dark. Little rose has the Virgin Mary in the back, in the background behind the rose. I think it's just the Virgin Mary. I was looking these up and some of them had. Uh, different saints on the back. I couldn't find one with hearts though. So I, I'm gonna price this at 50 bucks. And the reason why is it's long. I put it on and it goes all the way to the floor. But it is a long rosary. And we can see all that. <laughs> but rosaries are definitely good to pick up. Um, they do sell quickly. Uh, especially if they're, I mean, if you're priced right, they will sell rather quickly. So make sure you watch, uh, get it for the right price. But it's pretty nice. It glows in the dark. It's huge. I would think this is more of a like wall decor. I would think you can't wear it. Mean, you, you're not wearing this this rosary. So pretty cool little item. This one I picked up in a baggie. This was um, three dollars and fifty nine cents. So I'm going to ask 50 and see what offers I get. Now the hat that it was sitting in is pretty interesting too. You know, didn't make too much noise. $4.19. I saw the symbol on the front and I'm like, that kind of looks like LA. Picked it up. Needs a little bit of cleaning. Uh, some um, uh, sweat there. Sweat staining. But then I saw the LA symbol on the back. Sure enough, it is LA. And I had to scan this with Google Image, and I did find a list, a sold listing for $25 on this hat. So I thought it was unusual. It's a trucker style. It is New Era. Um, not all, I mean, New Era is a, a premium brand, but a lot of New Era hats, you know, they don't go for anywhere near what they sell for retail. <clears throat> so Genuine Merchandise, MLB. New era, trucker style, has a lot going for it. It's LA, and this should go for $25. That's what I'm going to price it at. And then I got some handkerchiefs. Not an exciting item, but I do, you know, handkerchiefs sell. I, I sold uh, actually a, 
uh, uh, silk Jerry Garcia handkerchief just not too long ago. And I've sold other handkerchiefs as well. $4.69. Brand new. This is from Woolworths, which is no longer around. But I'm going to price this at $25. Bucks and we'll see how that goes. $25. Handkerchiefs. Handkerchiefs do sell. People do buy them. All right. Let me go grab the rest of the items. Um, and I'll show you guys what else I got. All right, now the other item I got are, are is a model airplane. And not all models are necessarily the same, or you know, some of them go for more, some of them go for less. 529 on that. Looked it up, should go for 30 bucks. But um, make sure when you're buying model kits, they, you know, they are brand new, unless you're very familiar with kits and know all the parts. Because if it's missing a part, you know, you're either going to get a return or, you know, if you list it as missing something, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a hard sell. So model airplanes, uh, model cars, anything. Make sure to just look them up really quick. They do tend to go for quite a bit. And for some reason, even at the flea market, they'll price up model kits. You know, even though they're only worth about 20, maybe 30 bucks, but they'll price them like around 10, 15, 20 dollars, you know, just because it's like, you know, a cool car or something or like, like 57 Chevys or, you know, then they'll price them up just, you know, because of the content, not because of the value of the item, but I mean, they're trying to make money too. So I can't knock them for, for trying to make money, but Goodwill, usually these things are priced around around five bucks or so for models so this will be about $30 model kit <clears throat> that was a nice pickup and the last pickup is actually I picked up in multiple quantities <clears throat> in a large quantity I should say but these are I think I talked about this sir I don't think I sold the last one I'm gonna sell the other ones I got but compression socks three dollars sixty nine cents this is the one pair I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pairs. And these ones here, so this brand is Bra, uh, Bracco, Bracco with two O's at the end. And if you look them up, they sell a lot of um, like braces, compression. I couldn't find, I only found one listing for socks and it sold for $9.99. Looked up on their website and these go for 30 bucks a sock. So I'm probably going to price these about $12 each. And I'm hoping they sell quickly. These are a size. There, there are different sizes. This size small. And a size large. And these are a little more like uh, performance type of socks. So size large. So a variety of sizes here. But... I think the brand is a bit of a higher end brand when it comes to compression socks or compression or equipment. So we'll see. We'll see how these do. I mean, they're three dollars sixty nine cents. So hopefully, you know, I can get rid of them all for twelve bucks each and make a good profit on that. <clears throat> so um, I kind of want to talk a little bit at the end of this video about the state of reselling. <clears throat> yeah, I watch resellers online. And for me and my wife, I should say, because we both watch, it's kind of hard to find... I mean, I guess it's anywhere. It's kind of hard to find content that we like. And generally what we like and we want to see are people out and about and, or at home and showing us what products they're buying and what they're selling because i mean we want to know we want to learn we want to you know we want to branch out into other areas i'm trying to learn a little bit more about golf clubs right now it's not something that i pick up but i know there's some big what should i be looking out for in case there's you know a hundred dollar golf club but um I mean, we all can't know everything about everything and we all you know even though i sell all this stuff i'm not really a I don't specialize in, you know, I, I, I know shoes. I don't specialize in rosaries or, or tools or anything. 
you know, but I know what to look out for. And, you know, that comes from, you know, doing this for over 20 years. And, you know, well, I'm not an expert in any particular, in any of these particular categories, you know, I do know my way around them. And I don't pick up items I just don't know anything about. I have to know something about it in order to pick it up. And, like, I can't, you know, if I go into a Goodwill, I mean, if I go into Goodwills, I pretty much can be, <clears throat> you know, almost in every different section of the Goodwill with enough knowledge to, you know, be able to pick that up. I specialize in electronics, computer parts, so I that's usually what I gravitate towards first. Um, toys, collectible toys. Second, that's why usually I'll hit up the toy aisle, I'll hit up the glass for collectible toys. And then shoes. I mean, I'm slowing down on shoes, but I, I am, you know, I do know about shoes. I'm not a specialist in shoes, but I do know what I'm talking about or I know what to look for when it comes to shoes. As far as glassware and dinnerware and um, decorative, you know, home decor, you know, I'm not an expert in those, in those categories, but I know enough. I know enough and I know what I should be looking out for and I know what I should be picking up and I know the feel of different products. So when you're doing this long enough, you'll be able to pick up an item and you'll be able to identify, you know, that's a nice piece of glass, a nice piece of, that's not just, you know, regular glass. That's more like what I would call like, or what we call crystal, which is still glass, but in order to, I would, I would think, I think of, when I think of, when people say this, this cup and this crystal, it's a crystal cup. I mean, it's still glass, but it's a higher end type of glass. Now, when you're, you know, going around the Goodwill and I'll just, I'll just go in and I'll just pick it up, feel it really quick based on experience. I'll know. I'll be like, okay, that's cheap purchase from Amazon. Or I'll know, like, this is a high-end. This is something like a, 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 like, what do you call it? Um, like a little ornaments, like a little ornament, like Shawarsky ornaments. Like, you can uh, identify them by feel, and they'll be marked, too. So definitely look out for marks and all that. But I am by no means an expert in every area um, that I sell in. But I know enough, and I know what's high-end in the areas that I do sell in and items I do pick up. So when you're at the Goodwill, you watch people on YouTube and people on YouTube will be, you know, in order to be, you know, successful on eBay, you have to niche down to certain areas. You know, a lot of clothing resellers, you know, a lot of um, uh, toy resellers, a lot of sports car resellers. But in my opinion, when you are out there just in a single niche, let's just say you, you close you know, and there's a slowdown in, in the clothing area, then you either got to list more, you either got to lower your prices, you got to do something to make those sales because you're competing in, a, I mean, clothing, you're competing in a large, in a large arena of other resellers and retailers that are on eBay. So being able to sell other things and identify being you know, being able at the Goodwill or at Flame or wherever you source, being able to identify other products like Fitbits or like uh, Leatherman jewelry, this, or not, not jewelry, Leatherman tools, being able to identify these things will help you um, combat these slower times when sales are slower in different arenas. Like for me right now, shoes. I'm not buying, I'm not really buying shoes that much, but, you know, if I was only a shoe seller, and in my area, they're raising prices on shoes, and I'm losing profit. And I'm only I only know shoes. Well, then I'm kind of screwed because I'm either going to have to buy a lot more for a lot less profit, or go out of business, or stop selling, or you know who knows. So being able to have knowledge in other areas to be able to pivot your business on eBay. I mean, that's the great thing about eBay is that you can quickly pivot to other arenas if you just had a brick and mortar clothing store it's going to be kind of difficult for you to pivot into other you know you can't take a clothing store and then suddenly go over to home goods or something 
you know, pivot over to 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 being a you know seller like a TJ Maxx or something. You can't do that in a brick and mortar setting. You know, you, on eBay, yeah, you can. You can quickly adjust your what you're selling. Uh, obviously, if you have room and if you have the knowledge. There's a movie I, I really like. Uh, it's from the 80s, a movie I grew up with, and I watch it all the time still. It's called Better Off Dead with John Cusack, and there's a great scene in that movie where uh, he loses his girlfriend, and it's about, you know, the whole movie is surrounded around him trying to get his girlfriend back, and he's on the ski team. So he meets a new girl. She's a foreign exchange, a foreign exchange student, and she happens to be an expert skier, and so she's training him to help win the girl back, which he falls in love with the instructor instead. But they get up to the top, you know, this really difficult mountain, and she tells him, you know, he's discouraged, and she tells him, it's easy. What you're going to do is you're going to go in that direction as fast as you can. And if something gets in your way... Then you turn. And, you know, it's it's a quote from that movie. That, mo that quote from that movie has stuck in my head for a, a very long time. And to this day, I still remember that movie. And that scene just, it, it's like, you know, burned into my brain. And it, it applies to everything. You know, if you're, you go in that direction, and if something gets in your way, then, you know, you move, turn. Same thing in reselling. If something's not moving, something's not selling, if you are constantly educating yourself in other things, you can move, you can turn, pivot to other areas and pick up other items. Compression socks, handkerchiefs. Um, so being an everything seller isn't a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. And I don't think a lot of people are, are necessarily bad-mouthing it. They're just kind of saying... Which I get their point. They're saying that you can't move to that next level as far as income is, is what they're primarily referencing. You can't go from six figures to seven figures selling, trying to sell everything. Which isn't necessarily the case because, you know, places like Walmart that sell everything. Places like Target that sell everything. Um, obviously, as a as one man show, it's going to be that would be incredibly difficult to try to continually source all these different items, shipping out different boxes, and moving up to a seven figure uh, seven figure income. But um, it's possible. I mean, at that point, you're at that point, you're probably hiring employees to help you. Uh, you have probably get in a warehouse, but niching down to uh, one area has advantages, disadvantages. Primary disadvantage, if there's a slowdown in that category, you're kind of just have to ride it out. Um, you know, be sell more items, work harder, or you know, just accept the slowdown until it gets better. Um, and the good thing about niching down, the good, the I mean, I definitely see the benefit. Like if I just went down to shoes, man, my listing stuff would be super quick. My pictures would be super quick. I can keep like one template for shoes and quickly just, I can have, you know, one template for tennis shoes, one template for dress shoes and quickly just have all the specifics in there, have the description in there, have everything just super quick and you're just listing, listing, listing. Your storage space can be very consistent. Um, you know, it, it makes it, it would make the job a lot easier if I were just to sell in one area. But that's not what I like. I like variety. And I think as humans, we all like variety. You know, I'm selling these cans of soda over here. I had to pick out like two names. and They turned out to be all the way to the bottom. I should have probably organized these a lot better, but I didn't. And I was going to Disneyland and I didn't really care how they were sitting in there because I was going to Disneyland. But um, I enjoy, you know, finding all this stuff. I enjoy learning about all these different items. I enjoy trying to be you know, an expert in all this stuff, you know, um, look at all these items over here, home decor, I mean, this is all stuff I like, you know, this isn't anything that I don't, that I don't like, I mean, all the stuff I pick up, I pick up because I like it, do I like compression socks, I like the way they feel, I like them better than regular socks, um, so I guess I do like them, 
Do I like multi-tools? Uh, I guess I like tools. I mean, this is kind of cool. I'm thinking about keeping it. I like shoes. I like hats. I mean, uh, that rosary is actually kind of cool. I kind of like it. I am into jewelry. I mean, I like jewelry. I like a lot of stuff. Um, so all this stuff, I mean, I like, I generally like, and I would keep a lot of this stuff if I could, but obviously I'm trying to make money on all of it. You know, mug, I mean, I like mugs. I have, I have collections of mugs, you know, and, you know, they're all pretty cool. I like them. I like, you know, Starbucks mugs. So what I'm, what I'm trying to get to get at is you know, you'll you'll see a lot of people on YouTube and they'll niche down. They buy I'm a clothing seller, I'm this seller, I'm this. But in reality, if you like buying all this stuff, just do it. If you want to niche down, by all means do it. I mean that that would be very uh that convenient. You know, just niching down to one category on eBay. It would be very easy. It would make the job a lot easier make the sourcing a lot easier, make the searching very easy for product. Um, and if you want to do it, by all means do it. Um, if you want to do everything, you know, do, and the other thing too I heard today is, you know, the unpredictability of being an everything seller. And yeah, it's unpredictable. It's unpredictable what you're going to find. It's unpredictable what you're going to make on a daily basis. Your schedule, you know, I mean, just even your schedule is going to be kind of thrown off because, you know, you might be bouncing around to different, you know, different Goodwills. But everybody, you know, who knows? One Goodwill may have good stuff and the next one may not. And then you just have to, you know, go with the flow. Go to one Goodwill, go to two Goodwills, three Goodwills. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little unpredictable when you're, when you're um, an everything seller. But if you're selling a bunch of categories... You have a lot of different people looking in different categories, and you can appeal to a lot more. <clears throat> and yeah, you're going to have your your ten dollars sales, your fifteen dollars sales, and then you know I sold some silverware, boom, seventy dollars sale, which is pretty good in my book. You know, hopefully these shoes sell, boom, hundred dollars shoes. You know, you're going to get those big hits, and hopefully you have enough in your store to. Uh, to not have to rely just on the big hits, but you know, you have enough ten, fifteen dollar items, you know, maybe you'd like to do a little bit less than that. Maybe you like to do six or seven dollar items. But hopefully you have enough to, you know, support you if that's what you're trying to do. Or if you're doing it as a hobby or you're doing it as a side deal, that it's making enough for you. You know, because you know, at the end of the day, ultimately, it's what makes you happy, you know. And what makes me happy is finding all this cool stuff, you know. I just love being out there at the flea markets, the Goodwills. It's just more variety, more uniqueness than just going to Target. I know it's at Target. I know it's at Walmart. I know it's at, you know, I go to Shoe Palace. I know it's at Shoe Palace. I know it's at all these places, you know. I already know it's there. Goodwill, flea markets, you have no idea what you're going to find over there so um be prepared you know there's always going to be slow times in every in every um category and but people are always buying people are always you know we're human we're, and we live in the united states we're gonna be buying but i mean with everywhere people want to buy 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 they want 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 and hopefully you have what people want out there uh, another, th another, you know, thing too about selling, about moving your store, if you are experiencing anything slow, you know, go in there, make some changes, drop the price. Don't be so hung up on what you paid for that item and what you want to get for it. If ultimately I sell these shoes for 40 bucks, you know, they, they're worth a hundred, but if I sell them for four, it's still a profit, you know, a profit's a profit. Sometimes you might break even and just getting that money back. You know, this is not money right now. This is just a pair of shoes. But if I have to, I'll sell them for, you know, and make back what I got, the twenty two twenty nine. Go back and look for something else that will make me a profit. Don't get so... Um, don't be so hung up on what you paid for everything. Everything is only worth what someone is willing to pay for that item, Okay. And, you know, I learned that a long time ago in the sports card world 
when I was younger, I was just a collector, got older, started selling. You know, back then we had the Beckett Price Guide. And I didn't really, you know, I thought the Beckett Price, that was the price. That was the price of the card. But it's just a guide. It's just something to go by. It's not the hard set, this is the price of your product. It's what somebody's willing to pay for it. So when I started going to sports card shows, I started going, I'm like, wait a second. My collection isn't worth what, what the price guide is telling me, what Beckett is telling me. And, you know, then we, you know, then I was like, all right. So then I learned, you know, it's, you're not going to, you know, don't get so hung up on what the, what you think the value is. It's what someone is going to pay for that item. That's the, that, that's what, what the value, what it's worth. It's worth what some, if you have an item sitting out there on eBay, you know, it's been sitting there for 20 bucks. No one's coming around. Someone offers you ten dollars, and maybe it sits there for a month, two months, and finally you get a ten dollar offer. Yeah, I'm taking that ten dollar offer. I'm not gonna. You, no one offered me twenty. No one bought it for twenty. No one wants it for twenty. So if someone's out there wants it, but they want it for ten, I'm gonna sell it to them for ten. I want to tell you guys one thing that really kind of just my store just kind of took off just recently. I adjusted my schedule at work so I have a little bit more time to work on eBay. I'm trying to reduce my my um, reliance on my just my nine to five job and trying to hopefully go full time into eBay, whatnot. And I just I needed more time for that, so I made adjustments in my my regular job in order to do that. So in my eBay store, I was kind of while I was working full time, I was kind of reluctant. A uh, full time, part time, I was kind of reluctant to um, to really just kick my store into high gear because I didn't want to get behind on orders. I didn't want to get behind on shipping. I didn't want to be too tired. I wanted to make sure I'd have time to list and all that. So, the number one thing that I did recently is I turned on best offers on all my items. I actually turned off all promotions. Um, uh, I, I promote my items. I promote my items 2% across the board, all my items. However, I turned off uh, discounts. That's what it is. I turned off all the discounts on my items. I would usually run a continual like 10%, occasional 20% off, coupons. I turned it all off. Shut it all down. And I just went on and turned on best offer. Not on all my items, but probably 90, 95% of my items turned on best offer. And my store has really taken off. I had 15 orders the other day. In, one, in a single day, I had 15 orders I had to go out. And, you know, a little overwhelming, but, you know, I was able to do it. And one of my primary goals is because... The weekends tend to have been pretty, you know, the bigger uh, money-making days, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Probably because those are payday, you know, Friday's a payday, who knows. But, you know, those were like our $1,000 weekends, $1,200 weekends, you know, 30-something items going out on a Monday. And then come Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're typically slow. But ever since I've turned on Best Offer... And I started accepting offers, accepting offers within reason, within reason, not accepting unreasonable offers, then, and things have just shot up. Things were kind of going down, like my, my, the money I was making, the um, uh, conversion rate, uh, everything was going down since February, slowly, just slowly going down. I don't know, I really didn't do anything different in my store. And so with the fact that I wanted to make this more full time and everything was going down, I finally said, that's it. It's time to make some changes to my store. I, some older items, I just dropped the price immediately, 20% and then turned on best offers and that did the trick. So, uh, don't be afraid to make changes to your store. Don't be afraid to do anything drastic in your store. 
you know, anything to help move that money. Product just sitting on the shelves isn't, there's no money there yet. It's just potential money. So don't be afraid to make sudden changes to your store. Um, if your goal is to eventually go full time in this, you know, start building, start building up your store, man. Start, start, you know, looking for good stuff, stuff that's going to sell. Start, maybe, you know, you're just out there picking up, you know, just doing test items, you know, just testing out things, buying things, just testing it out, seeing what's going to sell, what's not going to sell. All right. I've kind of talked a little bit too much in this video. Um... But I hope you guys find this, in, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be talking some more about the eBay biz and, you know, what you need to be doing, how I started and where I'm at right now, um, why I'm trying to go full time in this and uh, what I, you know, obviously what items I pick up because I like videos. I like to watch videos where people are showing me what they're buying, what they're picking up whether they're not they're at the store or at home i want to see what what's selling what are you guys buying what are you guys buying that's selling you're a successful reseller show me what i need to be buying show me educate me you know tell me what i need to be picking up out there and i'm telling i'm putting this out there because i want to see more of that and i hope everybody else wants to see more of that these are the items that i'm going to be picking up that i've proven sales on ebay they should sell for me and some things I might keep, like this little bracelet, like this multi-tool bracelet. But this stuff should be selling for you. It should be selling for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is a long one. I hope you guys stay to the end. But, um, you know, give me that like. Uh, comment down below. Let me know uh, what you guys are picking up. If you guys picked see any of this stuff in your area. Otherwise, catch you guys in the next video. Hey everybody, I'm just, um, I'm actually, I was going to do a what's sold with what I'm boxing up right now, but, um, I have about 15 orders I got to get out today, and I have a tree trimmer coming in, so, kind of busy, um, not enough time to film this morning as I'm getting these orders out, but I did, I do have a, a Goodwill pickup, uh, that I already, a Goodwill pickup that I already did, so I'll be posting that instead of, a. Uh, what sold, but I did want to highlight one item here. I picked this up a while ago They were going on about four months since uh, when I picked all these up, but they've slowly been selling a few of them sold right off the bat and I picked these up at Savers. I got them for $2.99 between $2.99 and $4.99 a book and At Savers here where I live the books are buy four get one free so pay a little bit less than you know than what the uh retail price was and star wars epic collection by marvel it's a collection of a bunch of just comics that have been out over the years um in the star wars universe that's my washer telling me it's done which there are some shoes in there right now that I'm going to, um, it goes to like, geez, like two minutes of a song. It's kind of annoying, but, um, I have some shoes in there. I'm going to show later today on, uh, on my video or my video will come out tomorrow, but I'll, I'll record it later today. But, um, definitely be on the lookout for these. Uh, this one here sold for 30 bucks, but I've had just recently, I had one go for about $215 and I had other ones going for, I had one that sold for over $300. So if you see any of these out there, you know, they're about five bucks, even $10 for these ones here, look them up, definitely scan them in, look them up really quick just to make, cause there were a few that were lower dollar item lower like around 20 or so but all of them were up there around 30 40 50 into the hundreds of dollars so star wars epic collection it's a big just graphic comic um graphic comic style you know it's just a collection of different uh star wars stories that they made um not modern these are like a collection from the old what they would call the legends series like dark horse comics and all that so look out for these Incredibly worth it if you can find them for a good price. Star Wars Epic Collection. Another one going out. I only have like 
two or three more, I think. So, and I bought over 20, I think, I think almost 30 of them. So be on the lookout.